throughout history, Californians have repeatedly endured a potentially devastating calamity. And since no one knows when these perilous times will return, California continues to prepare for one of the state's most dreaded misfortunes. Drought. Not long ago, California suffered through six long, dry years. Fortunately, water projects like the State Water Project helped Californians survive the worst sustained drought on record. But the Central Coast had a more difficult time during the drought. Without a connection to the California aqueduct, their water supply options were limited to local supplies. The area's reservoirs told the bleak story. As surface water dwindled, more groundwater was pumped to meet the area's needs. This caused overdrafting. One danger of overdrafting is that poor quality groundwater may flow into areas of high quality groundwater. When too much fresh water is pumped out of the ground near the coast, seawater can move inland and contaminate fresh groundwater. Since groundwater is the most significant source of water for the region, protecting its quality is a major concern. To help reduce groundwater consumption, Central Coast residents became experts in conserving water. But the drought made it apparent that a long-term solution was needed. A solution that would reduce the area's dependence on groundwater, especially during dry times. So local residents decided it was time to connect to the State Water Project. By completing phase two of the Coastal Branch Aqueduct, a 100-mile pipeline would link the California Aqueduct to the parched central coast with the help of local facilities. To minimize impacts on the environment, project planners, engineers, and environmental specialists worked as a team to design the pipeline's route to the coast. Then steps were taken to protect the area's natural resources from the hazards of construction. After preparations were complete, many interesting and challenging methods were used to lay the coastal aqueduct along with its pumping and storage facilities through some of the most difficult terrain the state has to offer. As part of the State Water Project, Phase 1 of the Coastal Branch Aqueduct was completed in 1968. Its 15-mile canal extends from the California Aqueduct near Kettleman City to Devil's Den and includes two pumping plants, Las Parias and Badger Hill. It had been over 25 years since the completion of Phase 1 and on April 18, 1994, ground was broken for the construction of Phase 2. Phase 2 took nearly three years to complete, at a cost of about $575 million. As with other facilities of the State Water Project, construction and operation costs are paid by those who use the water. The Central Coast Water Authority and the San Luis Obispo County Flood Control and Water Conservation District are the local public agencies that pay the costs of the Coastal Branch Aqueduct with revenue from their water customers. To make the construction of Phase 2 more manageable, 
engineers divided the project into smaller segments called reaches. The California Department of Water Resources was responsible for pipeline construction on reaches 1, 2, 3, 4, 5A1, and 5A2. Within these reaches, the department completed three 8.1 megawatt pumping facilities, Devil's Den, Bluestone, and Polonio Pass pumping plants, as well as the construction of large concrete water tanks at sites identified as Tank 1 and Tank 2. The construction on reaches 5B and 6 and Tank 5 was the responsibility of the Central Coast Water Authority. CCWA also constructed the pipeline's water treatment plant at the Tank 1 site. The construction contractor on Reach 1 was the first to start excavating for the pipeline. However, construction didn't begin until after environmental analysis and mitigation plans were finalized. After consulting with the United States Fish and Wildlife Service and California Department of Fish and Game, it was decided that mitigation measures were needed to protect endangered species along this alignment. Um, as part of those protection or mitigation measures, we decided that we'd build an exclusion fence particularly to um, protect the blunt-nosed leopard lizard. Other listed species along the alignment include the kit fox and the giant kangaroo rat. In order to protect the leopard lizard, we built an exclusion fence, and this was done by the CCC. What this is is a steel-sheeted fence that is buried four to six inches deep, supported with rebar and with T-bar. Um, on top of the T-bar, we have some barbed wire fence to keep livestock out of the area. Once we completed construction of the exclusion fence, we had biologists go out and do walking transects of the area. If a lizard was found, we would noose it and hold it temporarily until it could be relocated to the new area. After we've done all these mitigation measures that have been required from the regulatory agencies, we're hoping that this project will act as a, uh, a guide for other projects in the future that we can blend environmental and construction issues in a harmonious manner. With environmental issues resolved, excavation with a giant backhoe could move harmlessly along Reach 1. Laser levels helped contractors maintain proper elevations inside the trench. In some reaches, large scrapers were used for excavation. Once a section was excavated, material was shaped and compacted to cradle the pipe in the trench. Meanwhile, pipe joints were prepared for welding. Sections of pipe were then placed in the trench and joined together. During summer months, welding was performed at night to avoid high temperatures inside the pipe. After welds were smoothed and tested, heat shrink sleeves were installed over the joints to prevent corrosion. The next step was to backfill the pipe. A combination of compacted earth and controlled density slurry would give the pipe stability. Also on Reach 1, the three pumping facilities were constructed simultaneously. Devil's Den, Bluestone, and Polonio Pass pumping plants are nearly identical in design and capability. The only noticeable difference is the size of the Devil's Den forebay. It's smaller than the others because it has a direct connection to the open canal leading from phase one of the coastal branch aqueduct. Together, these pumping plants lift water 1,500 feet in elevation over the Tembler mountain range to the untreated water tanks at the Tank 1 site. The Tank 1 site is located up the steep grade from Polonio Pass pumping plant. The site's intake structure receives water from Polonio and distributes it to the three untreated water tanks. Each tank can hold over 8 million gallons. The untreated water is then sent through the Polonio Pass water treatment plant. Two additional water tanks temporarily store the treated water before its journey down the pipeline. To prepare the Tank 1 site for construction, a large amount of earth had to be relocated. We began excavation here, leveling everything off for the tank sites. We moved one and a half million cubic yards of dirt, 
bringing the area to a level of 1995 in elevation for the raw water tanks first and then going around to the fresh water tanks or the treated water tanks on the other side of the water treatment plant. We started the tanks with the 30 mil liner and putting in the ag base and putting the uh, slabs down. We have some embedded pipe in the slabs and then began the walls. Behind us now we're just enclosing the first tank, which is tank three. There's approximately 1,200 cubic yards of concrete in the walls. We had gone through an entire process of setting up how to put these walls together. And the iron workers eventually laid out a pattern inside the tank on the floor and um, laid the tendons in, not putting them in the wall, but setting them up on the mat. Um, the mat was flown in with the crane and set in place. After that, we had another mat that came in over the top of that. It gave us an opportunity to make those tendons perfectly straight, which is really necessary for stressing. Once the tendons were in place, we could close the wall. Then final inspection inside the wall could take place. After passing a thorough inspection, the wall was filled with concrete. Braces off the ground, that's fine. Once the concrete had cured, the tendons inside the wall were tightened and the tank was wrapped with high stress wire and shotcrete. The once towering walls were then backfilled, bringing the ground level to within eight feet of their crest. For safety, a chain link fence was added to the top of each tank. Two treated water tanks were also constructed at the tank one site as well as two treated water tanks at the Tank 2 site and the Tank 5 site. Unlike the untreated water tanks, columns were placed inside these structures to support a roof. Also at the Tank 1 site is the Polonio Pass Water Treatment Plant. This facility was constructed under the direction of the Central Coast Water Authority. It can treat over 43 million gallons of water a day. The construction team's skill and experience was also demonstrated in mountainous terrain, where they made laying pipe look easy. Although most of the pipeline was laid in an excavated trench, some preparations required drilling beneath streams, boring through mountains, and digging beneath highways. On Reach 2, a technique called directional drilling was used to place the pipeline beneath San Juan Creek. This process started with boring a 9-inch pilot hole with a drill head that looked like a high-powered jet nozzle. Thirty-foot sections of pipe were connected, one at a time, as the horizontal drill rig bored toward the other side of the creek. Engineers were able to control its exact path as the drill head slowly made its way through underground formations. After weeks of drilling, evidence of its progress could be seen on the other side of the creek. And then, the drill head emerged, right on target. A 60-inch reamer head was then connected to the bore pipe and back reamed across the river. The final step was to connect the 9-inch bore pipe to the pullback head. The pullback head was attached to over 2,000 feet of pre-welded 42-inch production pipe. Huge cranes equipped with slings suspended the pipe in the air at predetermined points and elevations. A specific curve was maintained to help the pipe slide into the directionally drilled hole. The drill rig was able to pull the pipe by itself for the first thousand feet. Then a hydraulic clamp and winch system helped push the pipe the remaining distance. After nearly ten hours of pushing and pulling, the pipe emerged on the other side of the creek. On Reach 4, the Salinas River was another site where the pipeline crossed a stream. However, at this site, the river was temporarily piped over the construction area, while the pipeline was laid under and across the riverbed. 
When completed, the river was returned to its natural flow. Also on Reach 4, the Calf Canyon Tunnel Project required tunneling a 7-foot diameter hole nearly 3,300 feet through the mountain. A small locomotive and mining cars were used to transport the muck from the boring machine inside the tunnel. At the north side of the mountain, a spot was marked where the tunnel was to exit. And finally, as the granite began to crack and split, the full-face tunnel boring machine emerged, right on target. On Reach 5A, a tunnel boring machine was also used to burrow the West Corral de Piedra Tunnel, nearly 3,500 feet through a mountain ridge. To remove the tunnel muck, a more powerful locomotive with an improved braking system was designed and fabricated to handle the 10% grade in the alignment of the tunnel. To complete each tunnel, sections of pipe were rolled in on a carriage and welded together. Then the pipe was encased in concrete. There were also several locations that required tunneling beneath highways without disturbing the roadway and traffic. For example, on Reach 4, a conventional pipe jacking system was used to tunnel beneath Highway 101, just north of San Luis Obispo. A cutting head loosened the material under the highway as a conveyor belt loaded it onto a cart. The muck was transported out of the tunnel and lifted out of the pit with a crane. As the hole was excavated, 20-foot sections of welded casing pipe were hydraulically jacked under the highway. When completed, a section of the pipeline would be placed inside the casing pipe and secured with concrete grout. Just beyond the Highway 101 undercrossing is the Cuesta Tunnel. The Cuesta Tunnel was originally built by the Army Corps of Engineers during World War II to carry water for Camp San Luis Obispo. Its length is a little over a mile, cutting through the Santa Lucia mountain range, saving the project millions of dollars in construction costs. Deep inside the tunnel, the Cuesta project began with shotcreting nearly 8,000 square yards of unlined wall and ceiling. Outside the tunnel, a production rack equipped with a hydraulic pipe turning system allowed welders to stay in one place as they made their welds. Once three sections of pipe were welded together, they were rolled to the tunnel's entrance and joined to the pipeline. A little more. After the final welds were tested, the sections of pipe were moved inside. An innovative way of installing the pipe was a suggestion of the contractor. Temporary water barriers placed at the entrance and exit of the tunnel allowed the pipe to float on about 19 inches of water as it was pulled in by hydraulic winch. Once all the pipe was inside Cuesta, the water barriers were removed and the pipe was encased in concrete. It had been about three years since the groundbreaking of Phase 2, and on July 18, 1997, the project was officially dedicated to the people of the central coast of California. Since then, traces of construction have virtually disappeared as vegetation returns the area to its natural state. The team of designers, planners, managers, contractors, inspectors, and other specialists are taking pride in performing a difficult task with skill and accuracy, successfully linking the Central Coast to the State Water Project. Now, local water agencies have a supplemental water supply that reduces groundwater overdraft, that increases drought preparedness, and that helps local water agencies provide a reliable water supply for the residents of the Central Coast.